Zihuataneo, Mexico. May 3, 1975. After dropping off passengers at this seaport town on the Pacific coast, pilot Carlos de los Santos embarks on a return trip to Mexico City in his Piper PA-24 Comanche. The weather conditions are clear and visibility is good as de los Santos cruises at 10,000 feet. One hour into the flight, he witnesses something unusual. A gray, wingless object off the left side of his plane. And as he approaches Mexico City, he notices basically a small flying saucer just above his left wing. It's not as large as his aircraft. And he's flying a fairly small aircraft. And he's like, what is this? And then he looks over to his right, and he sees another one. And then he looks ahead of them, and there's one coming at him. It goes below his aircraft. And he feels a bump under his aircraft. And he's scared out of his mind. Anyone would be. He then realizes that he's not really in control of his aircraft. His aircraft is moving in a way that seems to respond to these objects, not to him. He goes to move the yoke, and the yoke is moving on itself. The plane starts climbing to 3,000 meters. That's the ceiling of the Piper. If it climbs any further, it will stall out. He will lose control. The plane will fall out of the sky. He's actually becoming afraid because his cabin's not pressurized. You get to a certain altitude, he's going to have a hard time breathing. The theory is that the UFO that came under the plane took control of his plane. And the UFO's own magnetic envelope is lifting the plane higher and higher and higher. So Los Santos is in a panic. He's giving mayday calls. He's telling them, there are these unidentified objects at my wingtips and below me, and I don't know what to do. As the private plane races towards a mountainous area, the three UAPs disengage from Carlos's plane and veer off toward the Mount Popocata pedal volcano at lightning speed. As the objects disappear from sight, Carlos regains control of the plane, but he quickly realizes his ordeal isn't over. He can't initiate his landing gear because of the impact that one of these objects made on his aircraft. He has to circle around the airport uh, about 10 times, and he uses a screwdriver to push the lever to get his uh, landing gear to come down. And he successfully lands his aircraft. It's kind of an amazing thing there. So he lands his aircraft. and. The story doesn't end here. Now, he would have had his whole career reputation ruined probably with this, except for the fact that Mexican air traffic control tracked these objects also, and this came out to support him. This story became a huge news story in Mexico. Didn't really make much impact in the United States, but it was a very big story in Mexico. Years later, De Los Santos revealed that in the aftermath of the event, he was twice approached by mysterious figures, warning him not to speak about his experience. The first occasion was just before he was scheduled to be interviewed by a Mexican television station. The second happened when De Los Santos was set to meet with the famous UFO investigator, J. Allen Hynek. Hynek was into the case. A lot of people were following this case. And just before he was going to meet with Hynek at some hotel, he gets another encounter from um, one of these men in black, these tall, pasty, white-skinned guys who warned him, don't talk about this. He was threatened. And he did actually stop talking about this for a little while after that. But as time went by, he, he, he's talked about it. It's just one of the most incredible aviation UAP stories that you're ever going to hear. And he got out of it alive. <laughs> 